Hey, and welcome back to Comic Book News. Today it's a very special episode as we're going to celebrate the fact that we just crossed the 200 subscriber threshold. Now, in this world of millions of YouTube subscribers and viewers, 200 doesn't seem like a lot, but it's a start. So uh, today, first of all, let's talk about uh, the, the number 200. Oh, and don't forget to stick around to the end of this video for instructions on how you can win free comics. Yeah, that's right. It's a tease. Superman 200 uh, looks pretty fun. One of those imaginary stories. Super brother against super brother. Uh, Jor-El saying, you win, Norel. By defeating your brother Kal-El, you've gained the right to wear this uniform. From now on, you'll be Earth Superman. Uh, as somebody who had uh, three older brothers beating him up on a regular basis, this comic really speaks to me. Avengers number 200. Now, this was a really interesting comic. Um, I don't know that I ever read it, but I know about it because this is very controversial. In this issue, Ms. Marvel became pregnant. She became pregnant by... Basically, she was raped. Immortus, uh, the, 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 the time-traveling villain, had a child named Marcus who, for weird enough reasons, impregnated Ms. Marvel... Carol Danvers, who then gave birth to him in three days, and he instantly grew up into a full-grown man who then fell in love with her and uh, totally controlled her mind and body and everything else. It was kind of like really weird and, and, and a little bit gross. Um, and it wasn't until King Size Annual Avengers number 10 that this sort of got even addressed when Chris Claremont wrote this book. Now this is one of my, if not my all time favorite single issue Marvel comic. Uh, definitely my favorite single issue Avengers story. This is the first appearance of Rogue from the X-Men um, with art by Michael Golden and script by Chris Claremont. Now Michael Golden is one of the all time greats. Uh, one of my favorites, written several of my all time favorite single issues, including this one and uh, some Batman stuff. Um, so what's interesting about this book is if you think about how um, now that Marvel or Disney has gained the rights back to the X-Men from Sony, how they could bring the X-Men and the Avengers together, this book is the template for that, right? This is brings introduces Rogue uh, as an adult and as a villain, as a member of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants led by Mystique uh, with the Blob and Pyro and Avalanche. And like, if they could somehow channel this issue um it would make a fantastic way to sort of bring the x-men and avengers together and uh give rogue the super strength and superpowers that she always had in uh the comics at least after this issue so i don't want to give too much away but seek this out it's been reprinted many times including in like a 25 cent edition of course the original only cost 75 cents for a king size annual Ooh. Uh, pick it up. You will not be disappointed by this issue. Daredevil number 200. A great issue, but man, what a cover. Like, John Byrne, one of my all-time faves on superhero books, can draw basically everybody in the Marvel Universe really well. Fantastic cover with Bullseye. I mean, it's not Frank Miller, but uh, it's an iconic cover nonetheless. And hey, it's number 200. Ooh, now this is one I did buy off the shelf and loved. Iron Man number 200. First appearance of the Iron Monger. Uh, uh, if you saw the Iron Man movie, you saw Obadiah Stane and uh, you understand the conflict that happened and the creation of the Ironmonger armor and all that good stuff. Uh, and this is where it came from. This was the first, like, the, uh, the, the, the 80s uh, Iron Man with the big so shoulder pads, the red and silver Iron Man outfit. We've seen these variations on this design in the movies by now, but this was, like, a really, really big change when this came out in the 80s. Man, I was loving it. Uh, Bob Layton artwork, um, who to me is kind of like the definitive, like modern age Iron Man artist. Uh, Uncanny X Men 200. I remember buying this off the rack. John Romita Jr. artwork. Uh, what I don't remember is what happened. I don't remember this being a great issue. If, if you remember, maybe leave something in the comments because I got I don't have this one anymore, and I'm gonna have to seek it out to see if anything exciting happened. It was a double sized issue, number 200. But by this time, a double-sized issue cost a uh, dollar twenty-five. Still a bargain in today's world of nine ninety-nine prestige format specials. 
Not issue 200, but issue 201. I looked at Amazing Spider-Man 200. It wasn't very memorable or great. This cover I remember seeing many times. I think this might be the second appearance of the Punisher, but just a great cover, a great design, that sort of pink bullseye in the background just, you know, draws you in. This is comics. Spawn number 200? Why did I bring this up? I didn't read it. Not a big Spawn fan, although I was probably the biggest Todd McFarlane fan uh, back in his Spider-Man and Hulk days. But I, I bring this up because coming out very soon is Spawn number 300, right? And this is one of the few books of any kind, right? In this modern day, books don't get to issue 100, let alone 200 or 300, and especially not independent books. Spawn has been plugging along for all this time, decades, and is poised to become uh, the longest uh, un un uninterrupted comic book series in independent comics history after who? You guessed it, Cerebus, who did 300 issues to finish his epic run. Now, it's almost comparing apples to oranges in the sense that, you know, uh, Dave Sim wrote and drew every page, along with Gerard doing the backdrop backgrounds, of course. Um, and whereas Todd didn't draw probably the vast majority of his issues, he might not have even been involved with. But hey, he's going to get the record uh, nonetheless. But I think the unofficial title holder is always going to be Dave Sim. Uh, I love Cerebus, especially the early stuff. It's not for everybody. There was a crossover comic, which you're seeing right here. But, you know, uh, you can be a fan of, uh, uh, of both these kind of things. You can be a fan of junk junk comics or highbrow comics or whatever you want to call them comics is comics so um i just love them to pieces speaking of comics now let's talk about the contest oh man we're giving away some free comics uh first of all i've got uncanny x-men number 495 now what's so special about this issue mm, art by uh written by ed brubaker who i love art by uh mike Choi who was a customer at Hijinx Comics. And one day he was in the store sketching me. And sure enough, he told me to make sure to order a few extra of this comic because this was the issue where the X-Men moved to San Francisco. So if we see uh, my store is in the Bay Area in San Jose, we see here, oh, there's somebody who looks hmm, kind of familiar, huh? And uh, what, how can we prove, is that really me? Well, if you look really close, you can see Hijinx Comics, San Jose, California. This was a really thr uh, a big thrill. Mike was a super cool guy. He didn't shop that long. He didn't live in the area that long to shop in my store for a really long time. But in that time, I got to know him. He was a, a consummate professional, obviously a great artist, and just a, a really heck of a nice guy. So um, leave a comment below uh, this video, and you have a chance at winning one of these comics. Okay. Um, the next comic we're going to be giving away, Amazing Spider-Man. Number 666, Variant Edition. Whoa. This is a special comic commissioned by Hijinx Comics, my former comic book store and uh, unofficial sponsor of Comic Book News. Uh, and uh, this was a special cover made just for that store. Other stores had the chance to do the same thing and to sort of customize this banner. But hey, if you're a Spidey completist, well, you really aren't unless you have this comic, right? There were only, I don't think there were more than a few hundred ever made. So it's a legitimately rare Amazing Spider-Man issue. So, uh, again, leave a comment below and uh, talk about this video or which of these comics you're interested in. And I'm going to randomly pick somebody to, uh, to win each of these issues. And finally, oh, as, I, as you saw in the thumbnail issue, I'm giving away... What? Incredible Hulk 181, first appearance of Wolverine? Yeah, facsimile edition. What does that mean? It means it's a reprint. Okay. Big deal, man. This is beautiful. Look at this. Uh, this looks better than the original issue actually looked. The color and the printing are much better. Um, doesn't look exactly the same because of that, but what's really cool is they kept all the ads just like they were in the real issue. So this is as close as a reading experience to this as you're gonna get without shelling out uh, a lot of dough for a really great copy, like looking copy like this that won't even look as good or uh, still a reasonable amount to get a super crappy beat up copy because this is one of the most desirable comics uh, out there. So hey, if you like any of these comics I just showed you and you want a chance to win them, just leave a comment below. I'm going to randomly pick three of those comments 
and they're going to get, I'm going to reach out to you and uh, we will ship you out one of these comics. That's our celebration of 200 plus subscribers. I want to thank you all again for supporting me uh, and watching this and subscribing and commenting and liking and spreading the word. Outside of my family and my, my job, this is one of the most fun things I got going on in my life and I'm loving every minute of it. Thanks again for your support and uh, let's get to the road to 300 and I'll give away even more stuff, okay? Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, you might like some of these other videos, so check them out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and ring the bell if you want notifications of new videos.